Banks are dumping mortgages. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, banks are panic selling mortgage-backed securities at the fastest rate since the great financial crisis as they believe that real estate prices are about to outright crash. We're gonna take a look at why the banks believe this, which banks are the ones behind the mass selling of these mortgage-backed securities, and more importantly, why some of these small and regional banks are gonna get trapped in these mortgages, they won't be able to get out, and it's going to trigger the next liquidity crisis that we're gonna make the case that this time the Fed and no other government agency will be able to bail them out. Let's over to Bloomberg where we picked today's story up with a headline. A 1.5 trillion wall of debt is looming for the U.S. commercial properties. And what I want you to understand here is you know, how the lending in this space typically works. So you see a large corporate office building, maybe in your city or major metropolis, and what happens is the bank is going to lend against that, but these are going to be done typically as balloon loans. They're not going to be done as you know, like your mortgage where it's fully amortized. Because if you think about it, from a bank's perspective, they have this large asset that they believe is going to still be there for many, many years to come. They have no need to see it paid off. And as long as it's rented out, they have effectively a perpetual loan. So when the balloon comes due, they refinance it, and then they go for it. But there's a number of risks that the bank can face. What if the property falls in value? Well, hopefully it doesn't fall too much and they build some margin in, just like when you purchase your home, they ask for usually 20% down. Similar story here with commercial property, they build a margin in, but what if that falls too much? Or what if demand for rents declines? Or what if office demand for office space declines and they can't get enough and the landlord cannot pass the higher cost of these mortgage rates on? Because many will say this is just a problem with higher interest rates. If it was a problem with higher interest rates, there is an ultimate solution that we will eventually see. But that won't be the answer because this problem goes far deeper than higher interest rates. And here you can see in this piece, just the headline part, office retail property valuations could fall as much as 40%. And you start to make the cases, why do some banks want out and why they know other banks are trapped here? Because refinancing risks are front and center for owners of properties from office buildings to stores and warehouses, the maturity wall is here and it's front loaded. So are the associated risks, being there's a whole bunch of these loans coming due here in the next few years. And now that's why we're starting to see some banks say, hey, look, we don't want to take that risk. We want to dump these bonds on as many unsuspecting investors as we can because they can't see what's coming. And now you're starting to see, but let's dig deeper of why. This is going to be far worse. Adding to the headache, small and regional banks, the biggest source of credit to the industry last year, have been rocked by deposit outflows following the demise of Silicon Valley Bank, raising concerns that will crimp their ability to provide finance to borrowers. So you start to see already who the bag holder is at the moment as these small and regional banks who do a lot of this type of lending to begin with, and now they've got liquidity strains because of deposit outflows, and for them too, it's going to get a lot worse. As rising interest rate and worries about defaults have already hurt some of these deals. Sales of securities without government backing full whopping 80% in the first quarter from a year ago, if you can imagine that. And amid the gloom, there are some slivers of good news. Conservative lending standards in the wake of financial crisis provide borrowers and turn their lenders with some degree of protection from falling values. So we have two issues here. One, we're already starting to see you know, delinquencies. We've seen some actual defaults in this space. Not a lot, but we've seen the beginning of what could be a lot more. At the same time, we're seeing demand fall. But the issue they're saying is, well, these banks have margin. They didn't lend 100% against the asset. Well, that's the issue, is how much margin do they have? Because if prices can indeed fall 40%, and I would love to get your opinion, do you think commercial real estate prices could crash up to 40%? Because if you believe that, then what this means is that banks have no margin and they're about to get this asset back. Because what will happen is, 
property managers who have these loans will look and say, hey, wait a minute, I don't have the demand here. I can't push these higher borrowing costs across because I don't even have a full building. And in a booming economy, there's demand for office space. They can raise the rents and it's not a big deal. But when you have empty buildings, as we'll look at here in a little bit, well, you can't pass on higher costs. The simple answer will become is, hey, bank, you can have this building back. And oh, by the way, it's worth about 40% less. As American offices are now half empty, and that could be the next big risk for banks. Well, it's not the next big risk. It is the ultimate risk because this is one banks can't get around of. You come, come to again, think about this. If you're a property owner of this case and you've got a loan to a bank and you're now half empty on your building and your leases are coming due and all of your tenants are saying, hey, I don't need that much space or I don't want this space and you can't lease it out. Well, that means you can't pay the bank. And if you can't pay the bank, it's simple, you go into delinquency, eventually you go into default, and you hand the building back over to the bank and let them deal with it. And maybe if you're smart, you can come back and buy it back later for pennies on the dollar. But in the meantime, this is gonna be a huge problem for banks. From Dallas to Minneapolis to New York and Los Angeles, offices sit vacant and underused. This from CNN, showing the staying power of the work from home era. But clear desks and quiet break rooms aren't a headache for bosses. They're a problem for investors and regulators who are on high alert for signs of trouble in the financial system following recent bank failures and now honing in on the downturn in the 20 trillion U.S. commercial real estate market. And just as lenders in the sector grapple with turmoil triggered by rising interest rates, the value of business buildings is crashing, which could add pain for banks. And although this is not a systemic problem yet, there are concerns about contagion. And again, this is a major issue here because you go back to the pandemic and prior to that, everybody seemed to go to work and office buildings were full. There was demand for more of them. So what did we do? We built more buildings and then the pandemic hit. And now you see that people are working hybrid work schedules. Some of you are working from home completely now, or even occasionally going into an office, maybe a couple times a year for some meetings. So demand for space has plummeted. And when you start to see the structures, we've talked about this before, the people that own these buildings set them up as separately owned corporations from all their other assets, from all their other buildings. So if they're in a position they can't make money, they can easily just default on the loan, hand the building to the bank and not impact the rest of their business. And while they're saying this isn't a problem yet, I think it's going to be a huge one. As signs of strain are increasing, the proportion of commercial office mortgages where borrowers are behind with payments are rising. And here we saw earlier this year, landlord owned by asset manager PIMCO defaulted on new, nearly $2 billion of debt for seven office buildings across San Francisco, New York City, Boston, and New Jersey, which we could make the case. There's going to be a whole lot more of these coming because as these notes come due, we're already seeing stress in the system where there's less space needed, where already tenants are already backing out. They're already saying, look, I'm not going to renew. And this is putting massive pressure on landlords to the extent where I believe that during the next recession, there's going to be a massive push, not from work from home, but back to the office. Here we can see plummeting valuations will make refinancing tougher for property owners who are likely to face requests from banks to put up more equity. But guess what? We already know these bank, these landlords and property managers, they don't have any more money. They can't go get it. And they're certainly not going to go borrow it from someone else to say, hey, look, can you loan me some money here? The building I've got is upside down and well, half the tenants are gone, but it's a great investment. Not going to happen. So well, again, you come back to the story here and that means means banks are going to get some of these buildings back, especially considering some of these older, less desirable office buildings might decide it's not worth the expense given the current market and hand back the keys. And banks may prefer that option to kickstarting drawn out expensive foreclosure process. But if you start to see a whole bunch of buildings go in the hands of banks, well, that's a scenario we will now see very often as he continued this here, Christian Ulbricht, the chief executive of global commercial real estate giant, Jones Lang, he continued as what lenders do in that situation and whether banks are sitting on such sizable loan portfolios that they need to take significant losses. And this is what happens during recession 
sessions is eventually all the froth and gets washed out from the prior, prior cycle and things get reset where people can come in and invest and actually make money. So it's actually necessary we see that all of this fluff in the last expansion gets wiped out. But when you think about the banks, these small and mid-sized and regional banks that lend against these properties, yeah, they might say, sure, we'll take the building back. They have no experience in managing these properties for how many years it might take to get them filled back up again or resold or to even just deal with them. They don't have the capacity. So when you start to think about what happens when they have to write down these loans, what does it mean the banks are going to need to do? Well, it means they're going to need to raise capital at a time. Nobody wants to give it to them. The worst outcome is the doom loop. Questions about the health of banks with sizable exposures to commercial real estate loans cause customers to pull deposits. That forces lenders to ban repayment, the banks, exasperating the sector's downturn and further damaging the bank's financial position, which triggers more outflows in a vicious cycle because the banks won't be able to raise more assets. Going to the Fed or other government agencies and borrowing more money will just be a very weak band-aid on a major problem problem to the point they probably won't even bother and then they will look at seeing more banks face massive insolvency risk more deposit flights and an outright collapse that of course the fed just won't be able to solve it's not the central expectation right now, but see, nobody thinks this can happen. Since 2008 financial crisis, banks have tightened lending standards and diversified their clientele. So again, if you think about what banks should be doing right now, is they should be out lending money at these higher rates so they can try to keep deposits in. But that's not working because when you start to think broadly about our financial system and monetary system, it's predicated on a number of things. One of those being the perpetual increase in asset prices. Now, it doesn't mean asset prices can't dip a little bit, but over the extended long periods of time, they need to gradually increase because if all these commercial properties just stayed stagnant, let's say they only went down maybe two or three percent in value, this wouldn't be an issue. The banks have enough margin. Landlords still have have enough tenants, you can refi the property and everything's going to be okay. And as long as these buildings are increasing, say two, three, four, five percent a year in value over long periods of time, the banks are winners, the landlords are winners, and even the tenants can be winners. But if you get a massive crash in prices, say 40%, you're going to see banks completely wiped out. You're going to see landlords walk away from their properties, and you're going to see a massive amount of problems in the U.S. financial system that will spread to the rest of the world. And there's always a risk for self-fulfilling prophecies here, but I'd be fairly optimistic things will play out in a digestible way. So again, you're seeing this commentary that, hey, everything's going to be okay, because the likeliest outcome is thought to be an uptick in defaults and reduced access to funding for commercial real estate. Banks, it's predicted, will weather the storm, though their earnings may take a beating. It doesn't mean there won't be spillovers. And that's how you start to think about where we started the story out today with Banks are dumping bonds. The question is, which banks and why are they dumping mortgage-backed securities? Well, because they're dumping them because they know that this isn't just some soft pullback in the commercial real estate market, that this is going to lead to a massive crash in prices. And asked about the danger posed by commercial real estate, Fed Chair Joan Powell said last month banks remain strong and resilient, but attention is growing on the links between U.S. lenders and the property sector. I think, of course, this is one case, as we'll all agree, that Powell's got this completely wrong. The banks are in far worse shape than he wants to admit, and he's hoping and just praying that something gets better so it actually doesn't mean that they have to try to run to the rescue when this time they won't have an answer. But now let's look at the collapse in lending demand and then we'll look at just what this fire sale is going on and why it's getting worse. Here we can see total U.S. commercial bank loans and leases. This chart from Zero Hedge, you see a two-week change in loans and leases, one of the, the largest drop on record. So again, we talk about the need for new loans to be able to pay off old loans and to keep the financial system running. You can see this little dip here during the dot-com bubble. You can see the global financial crisis here, which was pretty severe. You can see demand dropped, of course, during the pandemic when everything was shut down. And now we have the biggest drop on record. And if we look at small bank loans and again you talk about you know what small banks need to do here they need to lend new money and they need to lend at a high interest rates and they need to attract deposits 
get some of these older loans at low rates off their books, paid off so they can attract money back into the system. They're not doing it because here you can see, looking at the weekly drop or weekly change, the biggest weekly drop in small bank loans and leases in an eight year period now officially on the record. And so what you're seeing, commercial banks, these are the big boys, the JP Morgan, the Wells Fargo, uh, the Citibank. You're talking about the major commercial banks here, Bank of America. Look at this, mortgage-backed securities. They sold off $110 billion just that week, and last week and a year ago, they were sitting about $3 trillion of these. Now they're down to just over $2.5 trillion, and you can better believe they're going to continue unloading these things because the big commercial banks, they don't want to be the bag holders. They want investors to be it. They're going to let these small regional banks fail and let the Fed and other agencies handle it. But this is a warning sign, my friends, that there's going to be a big crash in commercial real estate. And so obvious to see it's one because of demand. There just isn't demand for office space. And that's going to change starting the next recession. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.